Today I'm going to be making Clouty Dumpling. Now growing up, Clouty Dumpling in our household was a firm favourite and probably most houses um, in the community. But growing up and, and again witnessing the, the process of the, the dumpling being done was again something to behold and it's a recipe that's burnt into my, into my mind over the years and again it's a recipe that wasn't ever written down until I actually was given a recipe and I was told it was actually very very similar to my grandmother's so that recipe is on my webpage and to share this with you is, is a treat now first of all again I know I keep talking about the enamel bowls for the white room but again it's a vision that's burnt into my into my uh, mind but unfortunately I haven't invested in such bowls we're gonna go with our large plastic bowl today so into a plastic bowl first of all I'm gonna take 520 grams of self-raising flour and I thought I'd just serve this while I'm talking because I wanted to sort of take back memory of the flour as you can hopefully see it being blown around the water top as it was when Gran used to do it on the kitchen table. To that as well, I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. So that's that served in. Again, reason for that, I remember in home economics, the uh, I know would ask, what's the reason for serving flour? And I'd be jumping off my seat hand in the air to you know, get the attention because I knew the answer and the answer would always be to get the lumps out. Well technically yes it was to get the lumps out and as I know would correct me it was also to incorporate the air into our flour. To that I'm going to add our spice mix which is half a teaspoon of nutmeg, half a teaspoon of ground ginger, one teaspoon of mixed spice and one teaspoon of cinnamon half teaspoon of salt. That goes into the bowl as well. We'll mix. To the bowl, we're now going to add 180 grams of margarine. And we're just going to, with our fingertips, just going to rub the margarine in. I suppose you could do this on a on a machine, but the minute time I've done this, Clutie, I've never actually the thought has never crossed my mind to do the machine. I think there's a bit of there's more satisfaction in, in just going in with your hands and, and just rubbing it in. And plus, who wants to do all that washing up as well with extra machinery? Now, a few years ago. I was luckily, lucky, lucky to be asked to help in the, the charity bake-off that was held in the Cala Hotel in Stornoy, where they managed to persuade Joe Wheatley, who won the second series of bake-off, to be one of the judges. And I, alongside Joe, went along that day and we were actually blown away with the amount of bakes and goods that, that that people took in. And yes, it was. It was a fun day. It was a good day. It was a long day. And everything that was tasted or brought in was tasted. Everything. No, but I can, the only thing is I can't remember, even though the recipe which I've twined with my own. I, I don't think it won that day on the on the Clouty, um, on the Clouty section. But it was one when I tasted it actually caught my attention on how similar it was to Gans. And again, it was confirmed to me the time we had the that day in the pizza and the Comiactory when one of the ladies said it was very, very similar to Grand's. And I thought, yeah, we have to put this up on, the, on my webpage. And today we have to show it being done. Anyway, 
as I've finished waffling on, we have got to the stage of breadcrumbs. To the bowl, we're going to add 390 grams of mixed fruit. Remember a few years ago I actually added uh, glassy cherries to one of the Cluty dumplings and uh, yeah, I don't think I'll be doing that again. Caster sugar, 190 grams. Give that a quick mix. But when I say quick, I'm not really rushing, there's no need to be rushing. It's just nice to be baking at home with no time restraints. So I'll just set that aside for a moment. I'll reuse my bowl. One egg. Just give that a little whisk. To that, I've got one grated apple. Light mix. One tablespoon of golden syrup. Oh, the joy of the squeezy bottle. No washing of tins. No running down the side. One tablespoon of treacle. And we're just going to let that down with a splash of milk. Just a quick mix to incorporate. You can see already the simple stages. There's nothing really to fear when it comes to a, a dove. Beautiful. So I'll take my bowl back in, and now in with our wet mix. And I'm just going to start incorporating. I can see already perhaps I need another splash of milk. Just want to go a little at a time. Just remember, we can add, but we can't take away. Let's tilt the bowl so you can see it. It's it's almost there. And I just wanted to get to the consistency of where it's gonna just pop off the spoon. spice and flour. There we have it. Okay. See it's just come together just nicely. We haven't thrashed it, we haven't beaten it, we've just taken it together nicely. I'm going to set this aside for just a moment and as it psst, put aside there, you'll see it'll, it'll start to almost ferment and just sort of bubble already. While that is set aside, I'm going to take my cloth. Now this is a, um, a pillowcase. It was a new pillowcase when we started using it. It's been used a few times now. Um, the duff itself, the reason, this is the clute. This is why our pudding is called clutey dumpling. The clute refers to the cloth it's cooked in. So it has been washed. But what I want to do is, I'm just scald this, and that's going to kill any bacteria. So I'm just going to pop it into a colander, and I'll pour a kettle of boiling water over the cloth. You can see how dramatically hot it is. I'm just giving it a wee shake just now, so I can just wring it out.
There we have it. Now, if you're in fear of using the best linen in the house, uh, maybe ask permission before um, you tear up any any linen. Feeling that muslin cloth, a good sized muslin cloth, is just as good. So the cloth's been scalded. I'm now just going to dust liberally with flour. Don't want to be shy. So the last thing we want is our dust sticking to the cloth. I'm going to take the batter. You can see already how it's. Yeah, I just love that. This little air pulp is already starting to develop. And I'm just going to aim for the centre of the, the cloth. Now, being able to watch Cran do this over the years, and when she put it into the cloth, the bowl, I know everyone sees of the bowl, the licking of the bowl is the best part. Oh, dear me, I've left, I seem to have left some excess in here, and it's just... <laughs> it's lovely. Raw, but the spices, it's warming, it's just tasty and delicious and it is one of the best parts of it but there's more to come so another dusting of flour a chain of dusting of flour sorry just one more mm. right back to it focus out i've got some twine feel on that some string, if you didn't have, if you found you didn't have any string, uh, you could use a like the cling film and just uh, pull it, fold it over itself, and that you can tie a length of cling film and it will act as a, a strong bit of rope. Corner to corner. Corner to corner. I'm just gonna take it up. So we know we're sealing it. And I'm just going to give it a little twist. And then in with my twine. I've left room for expansion. Nice and tight. Again, other side. When it comes to this, I'm slightly OCD because I fear it will burst when it hits the pan. So there we have the dove ready to go into our pan. Now we're going to add our clouty to the pan. The pan I've got here is as old as I can remember, and it's the pan that Gran used when she made the dove. You can see there's no lid, and no handle on the, on, the, on the lid itself. A saucer, or as Gran used to call it, a flat into the bottom of the pan. This is actually of a cake stand. I realized earlier that I didn't have a plate small enough to go into the pan. So we're just gonna pop that in there, and that's gonna stop the dove hitting the bottom of the pan. Goes. You'll already hear the bum bum on the bottom. Now, this is going to take three and a half to four hours of cooking and it's going to just bubble away nicely. Another thing that Gran used to do when this was on the stove, so I'll pop that on there, she used to put a weight on it and she used to use these, again, these are donkeys years old. 
the pea tongs or enclau as she called it and that will just sit on top of the pan so for the next three three and a half hours what you're gonna hear is this boom 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 and it's just the memory of all that and anyway so we'll come back in about three hours just to have a wee peek if not maybe soon enough just to see that everything is in order in that pan again we just wanted to simmering nicely away for the next while so the daft now has been on for three and a half hours i have been checking it every hour just to see what the water level is right if for some reason it's dangerously low you just pour some more boiling water from the kettle into it and there she is now we want to be careful here when we're taking it out of the pan it is very dangerous if you've got good tongs use the good tongs to lift that out very carefully you could use a, a towel as well doubled up but again careful because the water will seep through the towel very quickly so as i've got the cloud at hand i'm going to just very carefully lift this out And I'm going to take it over to the bench and we'll turn it out properly. So the duff now has literally come out of the pan. I'm going to work quickly here because I'm going to get it out of the cloth as soon as. So with a sharp knife, we're going to remove our twine. Because it's been wrapped really well and it'll just take a moment. I certainly don't want to don't want to cut the cloth because this can be washed and used again. So remove that. Okay. Moment of truth. Will she hold? from the front here just now. Just wanna take it. Use a knife if we have to. Don't want to lose any of that skin. And get onto a tray. Let's pull it out. Be careful watching for any splashes. Flip it over very quickly. Okay, so there she is. She will dry out. Now, you could at this stage leave it and it'll dry out naturally at room temperature. Unfortunately, I didn't have the, I'm not graced with an open fire the way it used to be done. Just sat in front of the open fire to dry out even more, to give it more of a, uh, a, a golden color to it. So I've got the oven on load just now. I'm gonna pop it into the oven at about 130 degrees for about 15 minutes or so uh, to get a nice, um, what's wrong with the skin on there. And uh, so I'll pop it into the oven and I'll see it in about 15 minutes. So here's my clouty dumpling now out of the low oven. Uh, I've done this many, many times and there's been different results. I think if uh, I'd put this stuff into that, um, Charity Bake Off, I don't think I'd be winning any prizes visually. Um, I know my sister's tried it, uh, she's made a couple of dusts for us, uh, two different results from, from, from both pans. Uh, I'm certainly not making excuses because I know, uh, I just wonder what Gran would think of this one. Growing up, even when it used to come out of the pan, fresh out of the pan, I think it's just sometimes nicer when the skin's that just a little bit more, I'll use the word delicate. Now you can see that, Ooh, gentle, hot, hot. And a fun favorite for me growing up would be the splash of milk. I'm finished off 
with just a little more golden syrup. Just memories, happy days, so delicious, so tasty, and not difficult to make, even regardless of how it comes out of the pan. It's, I, I know it's just tasty with the warming spices and the, the memories that come with it. I'll say just now, it is a large dove, and again, it's the kind of thing that is dispersed between family and friends. Feeling that, you could freeze it if you wanted to, or if it's two or three days older, uh, if, you, if you were going to eat it, maybe just give it a wee 10 seconds in the microwave, or even on the frying pan. Fried gently on both sides, served with a fried egg, absolutely stunning. So, I urge you to give this recipe a try, and uh, hopefully yours would be and a nice round coming out of the pan. But regardless of the results, it's fun and tasty to do. And I've, I hope I've um, showcased and, and, and done this justice today. Enjoy.